What is up, my fellow sun nerds? And you know what? There are a lot of us out there who like to watch the sun because it is the thing that drives the weather and sometimes our own energy. And the energy has been crazy over the last two weeks as we have seen four new sunspots and quite a few solar flares. In the last few days, since August 11th and 12th, we have seen three B-class solar flares and we had a C-class last week. So activity is definitely picking up. But I'm not one who likes to look at the charts and the numbers. I prefer to look at the sun for all my solar action. And thanks to industrial engineer Arin Quiores for your excellent work in the Sun Geek territory. It is definitely um, SDO eclipse season. So when you're wondering why half the sun is blocked out, that's because it is SDO eclipse season where something eclipses the sun. I forget what. But when we're looking at the sun, you can see that you're getting activity just about everywhere. You've got magnetic filaments reconnecting and connecting up from top to bottom, from the rooter and the tutor. You've got solar gremlins dancing about like they know a big party's coming. I remember in the last two weeks, we have had new sunspots, AR2767, 2768, 2769, and 2770, which is here. And it looks like we've got quite a big behemoth rolling around, which will be AR2771, I believe. Pretty sure. But this one is putting on quite a show. You can see, look at that. It's like it's sticking its tongue out and then bam. That was quite a uh, explosion of the filaments, you could say. And it is in the southeast quadrant of the sun. And I'm pretty dang sure we're going to have a new sunspot. So clearly, as everything has been a bit unpredictable in 2020, the sun is going to be in on that WTF action. So we're going to have to stay tuned to see what else 2020 has in store for us. Overall, the energy has been pretty intense for the last 10 days, in my opinion. I don't know how you feel, but it feels like everybody's kind of having an emotional breakdown at the same time. Everybody's losing their minds, which is no surprise. We knew 2020 was going to be quite an emotional roller coaster. And so it's best to just stay cool. That is what I always recommend. Staying cool never really hurts in any situation. Unless you're being attacked by giant aliens from outer space, then it's best to play maximum defense. But you can see here, the magnetic loops are a looping. And they're pushing and pulling and juking and jiving. So we're definitely getting some activity out of the southeast region. And it is interesting to see the sun wake up this early in a growing solar maximum. But as you can see, the sun is kind of moving and shaking all over the place. The sun is always extremely active, even when it's not. It's crazy like that. I think solar minimum and solar maximum is like a gross oversimplification of what the sun does. And it is interesting to note that the sun's solar minimum and maximum cycles as we know it come in 11 years, which is the exact same time that it takes Jupiter to orbit the sun. And with such an imbalance in our solar system, you got all the planets in the same side of the sun. Well, technically, Mercury's come around. So Mercury is our one holdout, Mercury. But it definitely leads for some interesting times. And I'm going to put us on an earthquake and volcano watch over the next three days. Because I'm in that type of mood. But... You got Jupiter and Saturn leading up to a grand conjunction on December 21st, which will be exactly eight years from the whole end of the world Mayan calendar 2012 thing. But it has definitely been a crazy eight year cycle since then. And so, you know, these planets will be pulling around as these planets move slowly together. And I think the farther that Saturn and Jupiter move away from Pluto, the better things will get on Earth. I don't know. I believe in that all planets have their own energy. All planets have their own frequency. All planets have their own vibration. And Pluto's vibration, energy, frequency kind of creeps me out, bro. 
And would I love to be making edited videos for you guys right now? Absolutely. But definitely since um, Saturn has gone into its, or I'm sorry, Mars has gone into its shadow period, as Mars is in Aries, my hackers step in and shut down anytime I try to edit a video. It's almost like every time we get a new sunspot, they get all upset or something. I don't know, maybe they're heavily emotionally invested into solar minimums or solar maximums. And they view everything as a business. Who knows? You know, I don't know, everybody's crazy these days. So if you try and figure out the motivations of crazy people, you probably end up getting crazier. And Lord knows we've all had enough unhappiness this year as it is. And we don't need any more. So I just thought this little solar explosion was pretty interesting and fascinating. And it definitely looks like this sunspot is going to be an interesting one. And so, yeah, solar cycle 25 active regions. The sun's southern hemisphere is undergoing an outbreak of solar cycle 25 active regions. So we've got an outbreak of sunspots, baby. Take a look at this August 12th magnetic map of the sun from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, AR2771. And we've got quite a few little spots. Each patch of yellow and green is a place where the magnetic fields are intensifying, creating islands of magnetism on the sun's surface. In one case, AR2771, the fields have intensified enough to form a cluster of dark sunspots. The other two are weakly organized regions of magnetic froth. Put that in your coffee and suck it or smoke it or do whatever you do. Man, you know, it's still a free country. Asterisk, 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 question mark. They might turn into sunspots, but haven't yet. So we got the two that haven't turned into anything yet. And we have AR2771. This is all very exciting. And so I'm just keeping you guys posted because when the sun acts weird, earth weather acts weird. And people kind of lose their freaking minds, dude. And no, try not to freak out when you see half the sun disappear. Yesterday, August 11th, just before 700 UT, half of the sun vanished. Dun, dun, da, dun. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded the event from a geosynchronous orbit 22,000 miles above Earth. I think the satellite blocks out the sun. I don't know, something does. This strange image means SDO eclipse season is underway. Every year around this time, the body of Earth can pass directly between the SDO and the sun. Oh, so Earth created the eclipse. That's wonderful news. Producing eclipses of unusual beauty. The alignment happens every day around 700 UT and can last for up to 72 minutes. The ongoing eclipse season will end approximately in 10 days. Between now and then, stay tuned for some rare blackouts. So yeah, it's not like the sun, what is it? They say three days of darkness where the sun goes dark for three days. That was probably like a volcano eruption where the volcano crowd, clouds blacked out the sun. And so people were like, oh my God, the sun has gone away because they couldn't see that there were volcanoes all the way across the earth or something like that. Anywho, I'm just keeping you guys posted because I love you and your asteroid fight club. And, uh, you know, you get bad times during solar minimums and then you get good times during solar maximums. And no, solar maximum isn't expected to hit its peak until 2025. It is good to see that the sun is waking up. Yeehaw! Because Lord knows we've had enough bad times as it is. Though I expect shiz to be cray, cray, cray through the rest of the year. So be prepared emotionally, physically, and spiritually, and mentally if you can. All right. I love you, Asteroid Fight Club. Stay cool. Talk to y'all soon. And hopefully when my hackers calm down, I'll bring you some of the best edited videos you have ever seen. Yeehaw. Peace out. God bless everyone.